I think we can start with, was the economic meltdown a black swan event? No, it wasn't. Having a quick look at events over the past four decades, it will soon become apparent that we should not have been surprised. It was predictable, not a black swan event at all. In fact, I would rather call it a black whole event. In chasing high returns in a market to wash with liquidity, numerous little black holes were created by innovative financiers that sucked in the savings of a generation. And we're all to blame. But one of the biggest problems we've got is our human, mankind's biggest, one of our biggest weaknesses is that we hate to predict a discontinuum. Now, I think we all agree that excess leverage exacerbated the problem. But why? I believe that when anything is mispriced, it gets abused. In England, they don't really have the same water metering system as we do. So believe it or not, although it rains there all the time, they have water shortages. These people don't care. You will abuse what's not correctly priced. Now, before I carry on, I just want to say that you shouldn't, it was said somewhere that I actually think that bankers got blamed. I didn't, and that was unfair, it's untrue. I think we are all to blame. But I think the bankers acted in a way that actually puts our social fabric at risk. A Bank of England report read that if between 2002 and two, end of 2007, in other words, the five years preceding the crash, crash, the bankers in the UK had taken only 20% less in discretionary pay and bonuses it would have amounted to about 82 billion pounds, which, guess what, would have obviated the bailout. There would have been no bailout necessary if they'd taken 20% less. Now my personal assistant and others in London have got to pay VAT of 20% to pay for these excesses. And the worst thing is, folks, it's still carrying on. Now, where are we today? We have inflationistas debating deflationistas. I really don't know. I have no clue as to whether we're going to have deflation or inflation or in what order, or stagflation. So we try to run our businesses in a way like Nassim said, robust. It wasn't that we were that smart at Remgro or Richmond or anything. It was that we were that scared. Because both Leopard Creek and Discovery Life started out of a very bad experience that I had in 1982, where I discovered a fraud, pulled a line of credit, had a run on the bank, precipitated by my father's own Volkskast Bank who pulled our lines, and only a chance meeting on Christmas Eve with Derek Keyes saved us. We then perfected the security, bought Carino Farms and bought it at a place called Magnum National Life, uh, fought the lawsuits, got them solvent, and I vowed that I was never going to be in a position where we weren't, in his words, robust. So it wasn't that we were that smart, it's that we're that, I'm personally that paranoid. We are not going to get out of this thing by relying upon governments. South Africa's a heck of a lot, lot better off. 
But this party is not over. I actually fear that it may not even have started. We're going to need economic growth. Europe's not ready for austerity, and yet they have economic programs that, prom that are promoting austerity. I am going to rely upon human ingenuity, innovation, breakthroughs in technology in the next decade that will hopefully destroy whole industries so that we can get rid of excess capacity. We have a two-headed problem, excess capacity and too much debt. I asked this question four or five years ago from a lot of hedge fund and private equity guys in the States and now every year we meet. My question was, if you know you're going to go to sleep tonight and you're going to wake up in 10 years' time, where are you going to put your money so that you can at least live as well as you do today? How are you going to maintain value? And I think that's the question we all have to ask ourselves. About two years ago, my son joined us in Spain. He would much rather have preferred to have been with his age group, but uh, he could see I was pretty depressed. And one evening we sat and I told him about my fears, etc. And he was quite uh, worried, I guess. The next morning he asked how long I thought the financial problems could last. Oh, I said five to ten years, I don't know. He replied that he thought about it and that the First World War was called the Great War until the Second World War. And he sincerely hopes that we're not going to rename the Great Depression as the First Depression, which kind of worried me. Uh, then he gave me some good advice. He said, Dad, you clearly remember Joel Strancy's drop goal in 95 and the Klusner Donald run out. I said, yeah, I very vividly remember both events. And he said, don't think of it in terms of years, think of it in terms of World Cups. Because in, 19, in 2007, it was already 12 years after Strancy's drop goal. And maybe we're going to have to start thinking like that. My biggest concern, however, is if we acted this stupidly for this long and the best brains in government, in regulatory authorities, in accounting agencies, as us as investors, for this, which is not a black swan event, should we not, given all the evidence, take global warming a lot more seriously? This is, we can recover as mankind from this economic disaster. But we're flatly ignoring warning signs that we're playing with the planet. I'm involved with the ecology and the world wildlife, and some of them drive me totally nuts. On the other hand, should we not be more concerned?